Okay. For our discrepant event today, we want to look at some traditions that we have in, in our country. Some of them seem a little bizarre when you really think about it. For example, does anyone has a birthday today? No? I usually get somebody's birthday. I do this. Okay. When did somebody's <coughs> birthday? What's the importance of candles? Right, we put candles on, we light them, we sing to them, and then people do what? Blow them. Blow them out. Now, here's the funny part about this. We light the candles. We sing. We have them blow it out, and that's where the fun ends. So much better to eat the candles afterwards. It tastes really good. Now, I prefer the unscented. It's much better than the scented ones. By the way, as I'm chewing here, I don't do this one for elementary students. You can see why. This is my favorite one of all time. And something you need to keep in mind is these are not just good for the classroom. If you're hosting parties somewhere, hey, it makes a great little, you know, kind of party flair to be able to uh, use the uh, candle in front of your guests. All right, so let's talk about this. I mean, they're really insane, or I've substituted the properties of the materials that we have that involve a candle. So what could I be using here for my candle? <laughs> Any guesses? Butter. Butter? Good gas. Oh, Never tried it. It would melt a little bit too too fast, but you're on the right track. What else is a little more consistent? String cheese. Okay, cheese. String cheese actually doesn't work. It's too flimsy. What you need to do is you need to get the block cheese and then use an apple core. So it you know it takes the center of the apple core out. That's what gives you the Cylinder shape, that's the same thing. Now you can use different kinds. I, you can have an ivory candle here too. You can use mozzarella or brick or whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, but the candle was made out of cheese. Okay, I've seen it done with potatoes before too, but the problem is potatoes turn brown in the air. Cheese has that waxy look to it too. Okay, but you also saw me light the wick. And blow it out and eat it. So what edible material could be used to place the wick that has the properties of wick? In other words, that it burns, but it's also edible. Ideas? No? Okay, this is critical. This is a, a, a important thing. What you need is almond slivers. You can buy these in the baking section, okay, at Giant Eagle. Because almond slivers have almond oil. Oils burn. Now, here's the key to this. When you light it, okay, what's burning is the oil, not the almond. It's key that you blow it out within the first five to seven seconds because after it burns the oil, guess what it starts to burn? The almond. What's the difference? Well, when you blow out the oil, it's instantly cool and edible. But if you let that almond start to burn, I've done that once before, and then you blow it out, you've got that little golden ember of almond. It's very, very hot, and you can burn your tongue on it. So uh, um, you want to blow it out in the first seven seconds from that. So again, one of my favorite discrepant events. Um, better for adult audiences than for elementary audiences, but um, I love it. So.